During this virtual macart lesson, we are going to be creating this adorable little monster here using just a sheet of white drawing paper. Now I have a sketching pencil, an eraser, I've pre-selected a few marker colors for my monster. Again, you guys can do whatever you want for yours. I'm just using normal Crayola markers here, nothing special. And I also have, this is optional, a small paintbrush and a little bit of white acrylic paint on a piece of paper, which I'm going to be using to add some highlights at the end. If you don't have a small brush like this, you can also use a Q-tip, a sharpened pencil, or even a toothpick to apply some color. If you don't have white acrylic paint, you could also use a white oil pastel, a gel pen, or even a white pencil color. Now the first thing we need to do to capture this cute little fella is start with a circle in the middle of our page. So I'm gonna lay down a couple little spots first. So one here for the top of his head and one for the bottom here. Now I'm gonna just whip around nice and lightly tickling my paper. Nice big circle for my monster's head. Perfect. Now inside the circle, slightly higher up, I'm gonna do another circle for my monster's eye. So here we go. There we are, again, tickling the paper, nice light tickles. Now I'm gonna do a big open smiley face, so running under my eye with a big arch that comes down to a big happy looking monster there. Now my monster is super fuzzy. He's gonna have little bits of hair sticking out all over the place. So starting up at the top here, I'm gonna do some little sprouts of hair coming out the sides. Your monster could look totally different. Use your imagination. You can do whatever you want for yours or do a very similar start and then start to accessorize yours however you would like. There we are, he's got little bits of hair sticking all over the place, super cute. Now my monster is going to have some horns as well. So over on the left hand side here, I'm gonna do a big horn that sticks out my monster's nice, even though he's got big horns. He's a nice monster. He's gonna need a name. Hmm, what shall I call this guy? Have you got a name for yours yet? We'll think about it. Okay, so I think my monster's gonna have a great big slobbery tongue sticking out, going down onto the table to make him super funny. So I'm gonna do a little line that starts here in his mouth. It's gonna come out, roll down and then out onto the floor. Now that's actually the middle of the tongue there. So this is gonna be the left hand side and then the right hand side here. It's like a slide. There we go. There we go, all over the floor. That's super cute, I like that. And then my monster's going to have some large feet. So up a little bit from the base of my tongue I'm gonna do a line going across. This is the ground that my monster's standing on. And then out from the side, about here, I'm gonna do a big old foot that comes in. A line coming down the middle to show where the two legs come together. And another line like that. So you can see his leg coming down and his foot sticking out the side there. I think he's looking super cute. And the last thing I want on my monster is he's gonna be drooling. There's gonna be a big puddle here. So I'm gonna do a little squiggle on the floor. Ew. To show all the drool that's coming off of his tongue. Super cute, I like that a lot. I'm actually gonna make my eye a little bit bigger. Now I can see my monster. Let's make that a little bit bigger. And then a circle in the middle of his eye. That's the pupil. This is clever here. I'm gonna do a little triangle cut out of the side. It looks very odd right now, but when we add color to it, you'll see this will be a little highlight in the eye. So it's a circle with a little bit chunked out of the side there. There we are. And then the last thing, one more little thing, I'm gonna do a tooth. One little tooth that comes down. That is my sketch 
done. Now take your time with your sketch. You can add whatever you want to your little guy. Accessorize him or her. Think about what kind of personality they have. Are they happy, sad, angry? Make the facial expression match whatever you want for your monster. Have a play around with him. Now before I start blasting color all over this guy, which I'm super excited to do, I'm going to use my eraser to take out all the lines that I no longer need, starting with that large circle shape. Remember that circle we started off with? So we knew exactly where our monster's head was going to go? Well, we don't need that anymore. The tongue is in front, so you won't be able to see any of his body through his tongue. So I'm taking that out. And I sketched a couple circles for the eyes. There we go. Now, whenever you're sketching, you want to tickle your paper as lightly as you can so you can do this. So you can use your eraser to lift any lines that you don't want. There we go. One happy little monster. Now, what I'm going to do is use my yellow first. I want the base of my monster to be yellow. So when I use markers, I take off the lid and I put the lid on the back for good reason. These roll, they're round, and when I'm done using the marker, my lid's rolled off somewhere and I've got to spend half an hour looking for it. And more likely than not, I'll jump into the next color, meaning to find the lid later, and the pen will dry out. So always have the lid on the back, then you know where it is. Super easy. Now, for my monster, what I'm going to do is use the point of the pen first. And I'm going to go all the way around the outside of my monster's head. Remember, I've done a furry texture. Perhaps you don't have a furry texture on your monster. Maybe yours is just rounded. That's totally fine. Whatever you want to do for yours. I'm going to do the outside edge first. Then I'm going to go around the eye. I'm going around all of the features that I want to stay away from as I'm filling in with the yellow. There we go. So that was using the point. Now I'm going to use the flat, the longer side of the marker. So on its side, and I'm going to go around using some nice long strokes, back and forth, lovely and smooth, right up to where I've done my outside edge to fill in my monster's head. So he's gonna look like a giant light bulb, super bright. Now remember, your work is not stuck to the table. You can rotate your little guy to make an easier angle to work from. I love using markers. They are so fast and so vibrant, and you can get some really gorgeous effects with them. I'll be showing lots of videos on how to really create some phenomenal textures using these very basic materials. Today, we're doing a very, very basic monster. There we are, a very fuzzy looking light bulb. Now I'm also going to use my yellow on the horns and on the leg as well. So same thing, using the point to carefully trace the outside edge first, like so, and then the flat to fill it in on each one Ta -da! and then the leg okay looking good lid back on done with the yellow now i'm going to do my red next whoops now with my red i'm going to do the large areas that i want to fill in first so with my red I want to do his tongue. His whole tongue is going to be a bright red. So again, exactly the same technique that I did everywhere else, using the point to carefully do the outer edge of his tongue first. There we go. Don't worry about the line down through the middle. You will actually still see that through the marker. So we're going to use that line later on when we do our dark outline. Now I'm using the flat again. You can see the difference in the mark that it makes. It's a much chunkier mark. So using the flat, going up and down like a slide. Ooh, this is fun. So I have a nice bright red tongue. 
Wonderful. Oh, he's coming to life. Fabulous. Oh, I like him a lot. Now, I'm not doing any more large areas with red, but I am going to use the point to create some fun details on him. So first of all, I thought it would be cute to have stripy legs. So using the point, I'm going to go across the legs and create some really cute little stripes on either one, just reaching across with my pen. Now I really like that and I'm gonna do the same on the horns here. So I'm gonna rotate to make an easier angle and I'm starting at the top of the horn and I'm gonna do like a little arch line. The arch line really helps to make my horns look rounded. So I'm not pulling the pen straight across, it has a little arch. And then I'm being careful to avoid that little chunk of hair that goes across. And the same on the other one. Trying to keep the lines roughly the same width on both of the horns. There we are, doesn't he look cute? Okay, I am done with my red. There's one more color that I want to use that's bright and that's going to be my light blue here. And that is going to be for the puddle down here under his tongue. So I'm really filling in with that light blue all the way around the outside first, carefully under the tongue so I'm not mixing the two colors together. Then again, using the flat, nice long strokes to fill in that slobbery puddle. Lovely. There we go. Now I am ready to start using black. We've gotten through this very quickly. He's a super fun little fella to work on. So using my black, I'm going to fill in all of the large areas first before I start doing the outline. So the areas I would like to be black are his giant shoe here, the back of the mouth, and also the pupil. So let's start with the pupil. The point of the pen around the outer edge first. And remember that little triangle we cut out there. Let's fill that in. There we go, now he's staring at you. Doesn't he look cute? Then the mouth. So point used for the outer edge, carefully going around that little tooth. Super cute. Up to the other side. And again, using the flattened section of the pen to fill in. There we are, and then my little monster's boot as well. So up and back down, all the way along the bottom, and then using the flat again to fill that boot in. Now, if your colors aren't super bright, you can always give it a second to dry and go over with a second coat as well. There we go, he looks adorable, but he's about to stand out a whole lot more because now I am going to use the point of my marker pen. And this is very important. Your work is not stuck down. Move it to make an easier angle to work from. I just noticed, do you see how I've got one big boot sticking out one side? Really, I should have that boot sticking out the other side as well. So I'm gonna do a little that comes down. There we are, now he looks a little bit more even. I had to really lean back to see that though. So it's important every now and then, stop and look at your work. Really make sure it's got everything that it needs. Add any missing pieces or any accessories that come to mind. Let's just take that one out a tiny bit more. There we go. Now, back to the point. So I'm starting up on my monster's horn here, slowly and carefully tracing around the outside edge, making sure 
my marker pen is touching the very outer edge of the shape, covering up that pencil line that we started with. There we go, let's go all the way around. There we are, he is looking lovely. Now the last thing I want to do using just the black, I'm gonna do a little line that runs behind his shoes to show the ground. So about halfway up the large section of his shoe here, I'm gonna do a little line that runs in to his boot, coming up, not running across him, and then again on the other side. So it looks like the ground there behind him. So we've just pulled him down, so now he's standing on the ground. Now, one more little thing I want to do. I'm gonna go back to my red pen and add just a little bit of color on the very tips of the hair. So again, I've put my lid on the back. Your monster could look totally different to mine. Different colors, different style. Have a play around and see what you can create, what different textures. What I'm going to do is start with my pen right at the bottom of the tip here. And I'm gonna just whip it up. A few little wispy lines to create a little bit of a fur texture there. So using the point very, very lightly, just like how we were sketching at the start, really tickling the paper as lightly as I can. I'm not putting pressure on the pen. As soon as it starts to slide across the paper, I am lifting it up, following the curve of those funky little spikes of hair. Now the key to success with this little method is to really tickle the paper. You should be able to hear your paper giggling because you are pressing so lightly with your marker pen. That's why he's giggling, because it tickles. There we are, just light and wispy. I was saying at the start, you can create some absolutely fabulous textures and techniques using this very, very simple medium. And I'm super excited to show you what these little markers are capable of over the next couple of weeks. There we are, doesn't he look gorgeous? Now the last thing I'm gonna do on my little monster is add a couple of dazzling highlights on the slobbery areas, on the tongue and on the wet on the ground. So what I have is a small piece of paper here with a little bit of white acrylic paint on. I'm not gonna pull out an entire paint palette, just a throw down a couple of highlights. So I've just added a little bit of paint to my paper here. And I've got a small paintbrush. If you don't have a brush this size, you can also use a Q-tip, a toothpick, or even a sharpened pencil just to apply those little highlights. So what I'm going to do is pick up a little bit of white paint, no water mixed in, just pure white paint, so it's quite thick and sticky. And I'm gonna do like a little line coming down the side of my tongue here. There we go. Oh, lovely and slobbery, look at that. I'm gonna brighten that up just a tiny bit. There we are, laying down these highlights nice and thick. I really want them to stand out. And then in my little slobbery puddle, a little bit of white down there as well. If you don't have 
acrylic paint to use. You can also use a white gel pen. Even white pencil color would stand out over marker or even a white oil pastel. There are a few different things that you can use. Let's just add a little bit of a shine to his shoes as well. We might as well. There we are. And I think my little monster's name has finally come to me. I'm going to call him Harry. I think he looks like a Harry to me. Wonderful. So really getting my highlights to stand out. And there is Harry. One other place you could add a highlight if you wanted to. If you close down your little triangle in the eye, you could also add a little bit in there as well. I'm just making mine a tiny bit bigger. And he is done. Well, guys, I hoped you enjoyed making your little monsters. If you did, have a go at designing your own from scratch. Start with a very basic shape. Mine was a circle. It doesn't get much simpler than that. And then my circle grew. It had an eye and then a fuzzy texture around the outside, mouth, horns. Do some design work. Design a couple different monsters based on different shapes. Once you've designed those monsters, choose one thing from each of the monsters that you like the most and then put those things together to create the ultimate awesome monster. Now, when you're using markers, remember, always put the lid on the back so you don't lose it. Use the very point of the marker, the pointy sharp edge, to get a lovely tidy line around all of your shapes. Then use the flat of your marker to fill in the large areas with smooth sweeping lines. I like to start with my lightest colors first, then I can lay my textures and fun details over the top. Finish your monsters with a really nice dark outline to get them to jump out of the paper, add a couple of highlights, and you're done. Now, I would really love to see your guys' creations, so please share them to Facebook or Instagram in the comments. You can even upload them in the student portal. And please remember, most of all, whatever you are doing, have fun with it.